We are back again on a Friday. Uh, it's nice to have you here with me, and I love that you're all on screen. Thank you for doing that. I know that's not always easy, but I sure appreciate that. I like seeing your faces when we get together and talk. Um, I'm curious to see how this goes since this is our second week with having an assignment, something that we were reading ahead of time so that we could come together and discuss it. I'd first love to know just overall whether you got to read it all or not. How did you feel about having an assignment, having something that we're going to come together and discuss? Is that working for you? I'm getting thumbs up. Any comments about that? Another thumbs up. Okay. All right. So we're doing all right with that. So we were talking about, we were going to the reference library, which, you know, is available online, digitally free. So you don't have to buy the book. You can access everything that we're talking about, but we're talking about volume one, which is the philosophy of the well-educated heart. So this is part of the catch the vision course. So on the book, it says catch the vision of the well-educated Educated Heart, Volume 1, Philosophy. So we were just... doing the introduction the first and yeah, she's frozen right Am I back to link together? Are you guys all still connected? Can you hear each other? I can hear you now. Yeah, I think it's better now. Yeah, I can hear as well. So I apologize when I go off like that, you guys just keep it going. Just continue on with the conversation. I apologize. Hopefully next week we'll um, have it figured out. Um, so I, anyway, I was talking about those different, the beginnings of schools, including um, Bronson Alcott, Louisa May Alcott's father, you know, she wrote Little Women. He started one of the first schools in America and it was a lovely thing. There were pictures on the walls and um, the chairs were all gathered around in a circle and it was supposed to be fun. And there was no standing in corners, you know, getting in trouble, getting smacked on your hand with a ruler. It was just this wonderful, positive learning environment. And I love that. I love um, that there were people out there who understood that. So now here's Marlene trying to help us understand that there is a, a more general What just happened? Where'd she go? <laughs> no. A mystery. Did she say something was happening with her internet? Am I back? Yes. Okay, were you guys talking during the meeting? Because everything was frozen for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So continue on so that I'm not interrupting what you're doing. We were just waiting to hear from you. <laughs> uh, my husband said, you should have gone down to my parents. You know, I, he suggested that and I should have, darn it.
Okay, I'm just getting my phone. Sorry about that. recording, I'm sure. Um, while Lori's doing that, I just, I had a comment about last week, we okay. talked about um, Orison Sweat Martin, and I thought it was interesting. I didn't think it was interesting. I thought it was horrible how everyone treated him as a child. And then this week, we're talking about some wonderful people who understood this magical time of childhood and all that can be done and how they like nurtured that and helped them to learn and accepted the children and gave them that space to explore and loved them. And anyway, so I love hearing stories about how children really recognize the attributes of childhood and the learning that can happen in the development and really capitalize on that. Yeah, what a sharp contrast between last week and this week. I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah, that's really significant. Um, anything else or comments, other things that stood out to you in this reading, these 10 pages of the introduction that we read? Anybody want to share as we're moving along? Okay, well, I'll start. Great, this thanks, Rachel. In sharing this right at the beginning on the welcome page, um, <clears throat> how she said, no one is going to tell you exactly what you should read or what you should get out of it, which is the same process you'll be encouraged to use with your children in their heart ears. Um, Rather, you'll find yourself taking from it what you are ready to take from it. And in, you know, I've been thinking about this conference and speaking and what I'm going to share. And honestly, this is like the exact thing that has kind of been the underlying thing in the beginning when I just felt like, what do I teach? And how do I do this? And what? I just want all the boxes. I want everything to check and know exactly what to do and what to teach and what to share and what how to know exactly how to do things just right because <clears throat> I don't want to get it wrong. And I love this reminder that there really isn't a wrong. Every stage, like you just are going to like go through this process and you'll learn things. And <laughs> you'll, um, you'll get certain things this first go around and, and as you develop and, and those this morning, I was, uh, she talked about layering, how layering is such an important part. I watched her new, her new like uh, introduction video, yeah. the orientation. <clears throat> she talked about the layering process. And I was like, that's exactly the truth that it, 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 it's not about being told, do this and this and this and this. It's here's where to start and kind of like, what do you get from that? And it's going to look so different. Um, but that each time we, as we learn and as we grow, that that process deepens. And just like sometimes they're ready to take certain things and sometimes they're not. And that that's okay. It's just where they're at. And as you go through, they may find different experiences in life or different things that they've learned or, or where they're at in their life that they'll be then ready for those deeper things. Just like I'm ready for deeper things than I was when I was 14 or 15. And um, anyway, I just appreciated that reminder that there's not always a checkbox and it's not always a, a to-do list, that it's so much more about letting your hearts explore and see what feels good and right and what sparks and then seeing how that changes over time. I love that. Thank you. And I can see where that would definitely be on your mind as you're preparing to speak at a homeschool conference. So these words would be very helpful. Other thoughts? Anybody else on this first page? There's so much there. Laura. Um, so I listened to it, so I'm not sure if this is the first page, but I felt like she was speaking right to my soul. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, yeah, this is just my experience 
was so similar to hers. And when she was talking about like those mothers who are following curriculum, but don't necessarily want to, but are afraid to branch out into that curriculum list learning. That is kind of where I have branched out into this year. And it has been a really neat experience watching my children be the drivers of their education and seeing what they will do. And just seeing that process and trusting them and seeing them grow has been really fun. Um, there were some other things I was going to say, but um, trying to remember. Um, I think something that's interesting is that we, that children are naturally curious. You know, babies put everything in their mouth. That's what they, that's how they learn. They push all the buttons. You know, we're always telling them, don't push everything, don't push all the buttons. And I just think it's interesting that that is how, that's how we learn through curiosity. And, um, and then I think we naturally tend to stop that process, um, partially because of how we were raised. I think society naturally um, tries, not intentionally necessarily, but burns their curiosity um, by teaching them what we think they should learn instead of letting them be curious and learn on their own. Um, and so I think for me, a lot of the process was unlearning what I had been learned through society and through public school and how it was the right way to learn and to unlearn that. Like the whole de-schooling idea, when I de-schooled my children, it was really more de-schooling me and my mindset and my, my mental process of what school should look like. And then unlearning that, that there is no way of what it should look like and that they, they will figure it out. And that's been my experience. I love that. I love that. And don't, you know, don't worry if you can't remember everything you want to say, because we're, I'm not going to let you only talk once. So <laughs> you can come back when you remember. Lindsay Watkins, were you going to share something? Um, yeah, it's, it's been a fun journey going through the whole, you know, removing public school mind frame, you know, and we haven't done the rotation with my kids yet just because we came in in the middle of it so we were we're going to start but i've been practicing on my husband <laughs> and so the my america storybooks i've just been reading him just a story here and a story there and it's been so fun to watch him go i didn't know that what tell me more and so i read about alvin c york and the va here in town is actually named after him and so my husband's like okay so i found out where he's from and we're gonna go so monday we're going to where he's from to see what they have up there for him and so he he's been fun to like he's like i want to go on these field trips and i'm like it's like i have a third child and he's awesome because i can just practice on him <laughs> he's a third child in more ways than one but it's just been so fun to watch him i'm like you're a grown adult man and it's but watching him get excited about it and then his excitement trickles down to the kids because they're like, where are we going? How far away is that? And then we watch a show here on um, PBS. It's called Tennessee Crossroads. So it highlights little areas throughout our state, you know, whether it's a restaurant or some creative, you know, art gallery or just anything. And so my daughter's like, okay, so can we stop at some of the Tennessee crossroad places on the way to dad's field trip? And so it, it's been fun watching this just explode over the last few months where I was, I came into summer feeling super depressed and super just, I felt like school just abruptly ended and I wasn't sure how to keep it going. But when I realized it's a lifestyle and so by practicing on him, it has filled up our july with more fun ideas and more fun things to do so i love that this has really just shifted our whole household and so i love that that is so much fun and there's so much joy in you as you're fun? retelling about this and that is really really cool lindsay i'm glad you're having that experience and in fact i was going to bring that kind of a thing up um to Linnell um as we were talking about the camping and getting outdoors and trying to motivate all of our family members to want to do that thing i was thinking hmm i wonder what heart based kind of an approach to to um inspire your husband you know to want to get outdoors and want to have those experiences you know because we 
that's the thing that we need when we um when there's something we're hesitant about, you know, is to be inspired, to have something that makes us want to be interested in that and want to make that, um, at least want to make that effort. So anyway, I love that you had that experience, Lindsay. I think that is really, really cool. Abby, welcome. Do you want to share? Say Abby. Yeah. Yes, oh, Abby. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I unmuted it. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm glad you're here. I'm so sorry. I'm like yelling at my kids. I, we heard no yelling, so you're fine. <laughs> you got off easy this time. <laughs> All right. Um, and we have somebody new with us this time. So I'm wondering, Kristen, are you in a place and are you willing to um, take a moment and introduce yourself? Are you comfortable with that? You can nod yes or shake your head and I'll. Um, sure. Yeah, no, I'm Kristen. Um, and I wanted to join this group, but I, we usually do a nature day on Fridays, so they switch to Thursdays in the summer, but then it's been crazy. Anyway, so I'm glad to be here. And I actually have recently just read those pages that you guys read. So that is fun. And I, I just love all this stuff. Um, anyway, so this is, I just homeschooled this, this year was my first year. And about eight years ago, God warned me I'd have to homeschool one day because he knew I didn't want to. And he knew it would probably take that many years for me to commit. But, um, so I just have one boy that's eight that's in school age. And then all my girls are younger. So my oldest girl will start kindergarten this year. Anyway, so it's been really fun. We've loved it. And I love all of the well-educated heart stuff. It's definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. That is wonderful. Where are you from? Do you mind sharing that? Um, I'm in Linden, Utah. Oh, okay. I have good, I have family members in Linden, Utah. Oh, cool. Yep. Yep. I'm, you know, when it's Utah and it's a church on every corner, I'm sure <laughs> you don't know them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's wonderful. Good for you. And so how was your first year? Um, it was good. It, yeah, it was, it was great. I had the newborn, so it was a little crazy, but it, it was better than I thought it would go. We had yeah. a lot of fun and they good. liked it enough that they want to keep going. So. Okay, that's wonderful. And did mom <laughs> like it enough that mom wants I, to I did. I, yeah, I've been so scared to homeschool. And kn knowing that I would one day, still feeling like I needed two years to, like, mentally prepare. But um, but that's not what God told me. So it's been great. And I've loved it more than I thought I would. And, you know, isn't that a tender mercy that often he does give us a warning so we have some time to prepare? <laughs> I think that comes with uh, a lot of us for homeschooling, for callings, for other situations in our lives. We kind of get a little bit of a heads up if we're listening, and I think that's really sweet. Um, I'm going to go to the comments. Thank you, Kristen, for introducing yourself, and it's really nice to have you here. I'm going to go over to the comments for a sec and see what Lindsay added over there. I love this. Um, she said, I loved Paige's saying on the Marco Polo, make them, make your kids the reason, not the excuse. That has been so much fun to watch Paige as she and her family up in Alaska just get out all the time. They get outside and they're out in nature and they're um, having so many wonderful experiences. And just as she's talking, you can feel that um, that joy. And also you can see how relaxed she is. Her kids are just out there playing and having all these wonderful experiences out in nature. And she has learned to just work with that and um, make that a natural part of their lives. It's been really fun to catch up on that. So again, Paige is saying, make your kids the reason, not the excuse. I love that. And welcome Jocelyn, Jocelyn Vance of Venture with the Vances. She's been trying to get on with us for a few weeks. She just got home. She was up in Utah while I was up in Idaho and we both made had major treks driving back home so we're both back home caught up on laundry jocelyn you're muted you're muted there you go oh yes finally yeah <laughs> but it's it's still never ending so <laughs> yeah. yeah right you're never caught up yeah but it's nice to have you here jocelyn loves Thanks. these readings too she's been listening to the um podcast too she listens to those while i think while you traveled this past time yeah yeah that's mostly how i get most of my listening in it's just listening while i travel so it works good smart. yeah smart yeah. mom would you do you have any comments you want to share before we move forward 
Uh, just in case you have to jump at, off. Oh, sorry, not at the moment, but maybe okay. in just a little bit. Uh -huh. Yep, no worries, no worries. Okay, moving on, moms. Other comments? Hayden, are you going to share? Yeah, go ahead, sweetie. Okay, so I like this part where she talked about the purpose of education, like what's God's purpose? Can you give us reason? a page number just in case people are following along? Page five. Gotcha. Near the bottom. Uh, and how your can you stop doing that, please? Um, second, sorry. Okay. Uh, so she said that she studied for a really long time to try to figure out that model. And she said, I've come to believe the purpose of education should be to prepare children to live lives of maximum joy. And the method can best be summed up in a phrase I took from the writings of Charlotte Mason. True education is between a child's soul and God. Hold on, I gotta go make that noise be quieter. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> That is so amazing that this little simple phrase is what was distilled from hundreds of pages of notes that Marlene took as she studied about what is education, what is the purpose, I mean, of education. And this is what she, this is what she got. How do you feel about that answer? The purpose of education should be to prepare children to live lives of maximum joy. What about that part? Are you beginning to agree with that? Are you on board? I know that's not what we were taught or experienced, but can you see that as kind of your role in your children's lives as helping them, helping prepare them for that? Cadence, you're back. Do you want to share more about that? Yeah, sorry. I just want to read a little more that she said down there. Uh, a simple pattern for learning unfolded and I came to appreciate the powerful influence of fine literature art, poetry, and music, and the sweet influences of nature on the hearts of our children and a mother's unique role as the best educator of a child's heart. Yeah, anyway, yeah, oh, it's just beautiful. And I loved it when she was talking later about the, the, that the righteous and wise shall be given books of joy. Do you remember that part where she was talking about yeah. that? She's yeah. just amazing. She's always having these dreams and like just wonderful experiences and and I don't know. It, it's such a gift to get anything from her. I agree. And you've been following for a while, haven't you, Cadence? For like five five years, something like that. You've been part of this. Oh, I think. What did you say? Three to four, three, four years. Oh, three to four years. Yeah, what a blessing to have that in your life as you're raising your children. And it's funny because I didn't even realize till this year the stuff how that well educated heart is like first and foremost for mothers. Like I didn't realize that. And I'm like, well, this is great. I mean, so it's okay. Whenever you figure things out, I'm still learning so much. Right. And I feel like I'm learning for the rest of my life, which is wonderful because I love it. Right. I don't feel bad if you're like, Oh, I didn't realize this or that. It doesn't matter. You'll you, yeah. You'll get it because you need it. I guess. Exactly, exactly. I think that's how it is. Really, truly, it is line upon line, precept upon precept, and we are just uncovering the layers as we dig, as we dig, you know, down and and really start searching in that material. We start finding the things that we need, because I continue to learn things and to, and to find things that I didn't realize were there, and I don't know how I missed it because it maybe was talked about in a podcast or in a, something that I had watched early on, but I guess I wasn't ready for it. And so maybe I didn't have a place to file it away. And so don't, um, don't get stuck if you can't quite figure out um, how to navigate on the Libraries of Hope or the Well-Educated Heart app. It's just that maybe you haven't spent as much time there yet as you need to be able to get to that point. It does take some investigating. I think that you need to pay a little bit of a price to find those gems and that makes it so much more worth it to you. They become more valuable than if they were just given to you, you know, 
um, I really I really see that here. I also love that it is for all women, you know, all women. It doesn't matter if you've never had children of your own or if your children are all grown up, if they're in public school, if um, you are still a vital part of this work, she says. Your influence will be felt in ways you may not now imagine. I, I know that's true. I feel that so strongly. All the things I talk about, Marlene says, I will bring an added measure of joy into your life. If we would just believe that, and then as moms, take the time to study the things that are in the libraries of hope, even if we just put our kids' education on a sabbatical, you know, for a year, and just let them play so that we started to get that idea of, oh yeah, children learn through play. Children's work is play. That's how they learn. Um, I honestly, from my experience, from looking back after having educated for children all the way through, you can tell me your kids are any ages and all the way up in high school. And I still say, take a year off. If you haven't had the time to really study this, let them take a year off. I promise you, it's not going to hurt them. It will only bless them and bless you. It's just that it's so hard to believe that. It's so hard to let go, especially because the world around us measures things. And if you've, you've listened much to Marlene, she talks about how the mind, with the mind education, we measure things with the heart. We don't. We don't have to because we can see that change. I knew Jocelyn would come up on this. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, uh, going along with what you were saying of taking a year off, um, I just wanted to share, like, when we first, um, well, I was first introduced to the Well-Educated Heart, maybe, like, I don't know. I feel like I listened to Marlene Peterson probably about eight years ago at a homeschool conference that I went to, and she talked about, um, you know, educating the heart, but I loved the idea, but I didn't know how to quite put it all together, you know, and I hadn't really seen her libraries of hope in her website. And then I think I saw her website about seven years ago, and I remember seeing it and it just looked overwhelming. So I thought, I don't think I could do that, you know, but I still always had in the back of my mind, you know, I want to educate their hearts. And so I just tried to take what I could from what I heard. Um, but finally, like about five, four years ago, then um, that's when I went, I feel like I finally started um, just understanding what she was talking about. And so we took a break for that year. I just felt like I wanted to take a break from everything and just focus on the well-educated heart. And so um, we just listened to a lot of her podcasts during the day, I would turn on, she has a lot of recordings of different stories, um, the ones from the pilgrims, and and that was kind of our school, just listening to all these different stories that she that she has recorded under the different months from the rotation. And we just did like art projects and craft projects as we were listening to them, or puzzles and things like that. And that was just, that was really nice just to do that together as a family and hear all those stories. Cause even um, a lot of my kids just, as they heard, I think our favorite story was the story of Lafayette and the story of the pilgrims um, that she has recorded. And um, I think Lafayette is under the month of France. He's in, in January. Um, but just hearing these stories, just, it was, it was really, it was like one of my favorite memories of homeschooling, just to, just to take a break from everything else. And they still, my kids still always have a hard time taking a break, especially because they're older. So they always are super motiv motivated to do stuff. <laughs> Even though I say, you don't have to do anything. They say, no, I'm going to do stuff. <laughs> so they like to do things. Um, they like to do their math and stuff like that. But we tried to take a break as much as possible. And I just told them, I just wanted to focus on hearing these stories and so that was really, really beneficial, I think, to have that time. And, so, and it doesn't, oh, Go sorry, on. it does it didn't harm their education at all to take a break. I, um, you know, my oldest is 17. So now he's finishing up his second year of community college before he turns 18. And sometimes I look back and I think, wow, you know, we took a break and I sometimes feel like we didn't do as much um, academic things, <laughs> um, but he did really well in as he went to a charter school in high school and then he did a community college because he just really wanted to he's really been always been very academically driven he loves to he wants to finish college and do more things I don't know he wants to do a lot of different things with his life so um it really if they have you know if they have a well-educated heart I've just seen that that really is the most important piece in the puzzle for helping them to accomplish their goals and and things that the Lord has in place in store for them so yeah, 
I think so too. And and did it give you more confidence taking that year off, Jocelyn, and just le listening and reading and? Yeah, it did. I, I, I think that was the year she came out with the Take Fives, maybe. And so I listened to all her Take Five podcasts and um, just trying to grasp, you know, how to put it all together because that's kind of hard for was hard for me just to figure out how to put it all together. Like I, I loved the ideas, but I just didn't know how to organize it all and make it happen. But and then I just feel like year after year, you just do a little bit each year. You know, after once you do what the first year you start, you know, just taking a few stories from each different thing from the month and creating something you know I, I like to do more like a unit study or something where we just do projects based on that topic or and then each year I feel like you just keep on evolving and getting better at it so I think it doesn't hurt to just do a little bit you know each year just focus on one thing at a time yeah thank you so much for sharing that I knew I, I was pretty sure that that would get your comments. So I, I appreciate that because I love watching what you do with your kids and the confidence that you have in this way of learning and teaching. Thanks. Yeah, it's wonderful to see that. Um, and it's Can wonderful. I just really quick? Yes, Sorry. sure, go ahead. No, go. Um, so when I first heard someone say that ch the children learn through work or uh, learn children's work Play is children's work. Sorry, I cannot. When I first heard that, I was like, what? That is like teaching them to be lazy and just to just to go off and have fun and not do what they're supposed to do. And and so it took me a while to come around to that, even though I was already um, making sure that my kids had a ton of free time to play. And I required very little school of them like just very incremental stuff I don't know where I'm going with this but I was in that position before and and it didn't make sense to me at the time but I've since learned and saw how beautiful it really is <laughs> oh you moms well you are right in the middle of it and that is truly a beautiful place to be although it doesn't always feel like that <laughs> laura i would love to just add to that comment that was a beautiful <gasps> comment about play um yeah. something that i am learning currently is that i can learn about how play is not only important for children to learn but for us as adults and so I'm currently working on building a business. And one of the things that I am like actively working on shifting my mindset around is that work can be fun and easy and it doesn't have to be hard. And when we have that mindset, we like our emotions drive all of our actions. And so when we're operating from fun and easy and play, we are going to like our actions and our work, we're gonna be so much more efficient and get more done because we're, it's not like this heavy, you know, this heavy feeling that's driving that action. And so that we can actually learn from our children and their excitement for life and that learning can be fun and that play is really an important part of life, not just for kids, but for us too. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. I was trying to type as you were sharing i love that laura thanks okay other thoughts other things yes <laughs> that's snap that jobs a game yes mary poppins did did have some good ideas i love it abby it's nice to see your face it's good to have you here sweetie hey i'd like to share just a thought i had um can you hear me okay uh-huh yep Okay, so she just reminded me about something I've actually started to implement with my children. I was reading like a parenting book and it was talking about how sometimes um, kids don't know how to, what's the word? They don't know like about their emotions. <laughs> I'm so eloquent when I speak. They don't know how to, To control their emotions they don't really know sorry I don't know where I'm going with this but um, the book was talking about how sorry now I'm just totally drawing a blank give me just a second. you are fine um, you want it you do you want a second or you want it you can just work through it it's fine we all understand this is you know 
brain fog, mom brain, whatever you want to call it. It's all good, Abby. I know. Okay, so um, she was talking about how sometimes we choose to have a bad attitude. And so when we're getting in that, um, having a bad attitude or we're bummed about something or disappointed that something didn't go our way, we just need to teach our kids that we have control of our emotions and we can choose to have a good attitude. And they were just saying, okay, you have 60 seconds to change your attitude in the book. And so I've just started to implement that when I've just noticed that I've been having a bad attitude or I've been disappointed in something that's going wrong. I've just held that little mindset in my head, like, okay, I have 60 seconds to change my attitude and just get back on track. And it's really helped me. And I know that's like probably not really something we expect. I was going to share because it's like really random, but just off of what she said about our emotions and our actions, and that's just really helped me. And it's something I feel like is so freeing if we can teach our kids to have a good attitude. So anyways, just wanted to share that little thought. Oh, that's awesome, Abby. That's an important thing to learn and a really great thing that we can try to model for our kids and also help them see, oh, sometimes we don't do so well either. And that, you know, we, we can catch ourselves and, um, and try again, you know, have a do over. Look to see if somebody because else want to comment on that. It's Lindsay, funny. yeah. We, we like choose a, a word for the year. <laughs> so last year we kept, we chose choose. You know, everything you, you get a choice in everything, whether it's, you know, your lunch decision or your attitude. And my daughter, she was so angry. She's like, choose isn't even a word. Things just happen. <laughs> I was just like, so we had to take, teach her that, you know, everything is a choice. And so it was funny because for like months, she would come downstairs just grumpy. And we're like, oh, you can choose to go back up to bed <laughs> and start over or you can choose to change your attitude, you know? And she's like, it's not a choice. This is how I woke up. <laughs> it was so funny. So when she said that, I was like, yeah, they don't get it. So you really have to teach them that they do have those choices. And, but yeah, now she knows choose is really a word. <laughs> That's awesome. I think I had to learn that as an adult, actually. I, I didn't really learn it as a child. There were some things I really still thought that, you know, no, this is how I feel. I can't just change it, you know, but I started learning. There are some tools you could use. There are some ways you could do that. So <laughs> good for her for learning that. Okay. Other things, other things that you learned, did you learn other things from this reading that you wanted to share things that stood out did you find yourself always do in these books i just love them there's so much there and my internet connection is unstable again so you may have to keep it going lanelle so i'd like to share something on page 10 and i'll read it she says i have a vision of a remnant of mothers of refined taste who are well educated cultured and articulate they are to be a force of great influence in the world mothers of influence that will never happen without effort and of doing hard things. I totally get that you're busy. Like Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. But I believe, because I have experienced it for myself, that if you have but the desire in your heart and will act upon that desire by doing what you can do, the Lord will magnify your efforts, whatever they are. I really liked that because... I think this year has taught me a lot about that paragraph. And I think my association with you ladies has added to my experience and been just a personal testament that what she's saying is true, that we, we are being gathered, that we are being prepared and we are being put in places to influence others. And I've experienced that. I've been so inspired by many of you. I've, feel, I've felt so enriched. It's a really, um, really neat opportunity to be able to use your experiences and your strengths and your thoughts and to be able to share it with others and to be able to lift others and then to be able to receive that as well from other people. 
So seeing Paige and her outdoor adventures have been inspiring to me. I don't remember who it was, but someone was mentioning recently about how our children will become what we are. Like the way that we act and behave is what our children will turn into, not necessarily what we do to parent them or to teach them. So I just think it's a neat opportunity that we have to associate with each other and to, to experience what Marlene has talked about in that paragraph. Thank you. I think it's very exciting and I keep feeling like we're moving um, closer to that, whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing. Um, I was looking for my little post that I put in Teach Our Own Hearts this week. So I told you that I had met with a mom while I was up in Idaho and she is, you know, the millennial press, the um, letters to the principal and then these lovely books, right? So Allie um, Eisenach, that's the George Q. Cannon's great, great something granddaughter that did this. Um, well, Mar Marcy that I met with, she was part of, she helped to fund that, the the printing of, I think the volume one, um, and was very, very involved. And she was sharing all of that with me. We were talking about it. Um, and we were talking about this idea where about there being mothers who have this feeling like I'm supposed to do something. I'm supposed to create something I'm supposed to, but they're not sure yet. Like they've given kind of a, been given some snippets of ideas, but not the whole picture yet. And that's exciting to me. And like I mentioned to you all the other day, I don't remember where I did, but I said something about, oh gosh, why can't I remember things? Um, it was something about, we all are, have been put together, gathered together for a reason. And I really do believe that there is something for each one of you to do in your own areas. And like I said, I don't want this group to stop because I do feel like we need to continue to be fortified here as we meet together. Together, but I'm for these little whisperings. And it was your gifts, your talents. The thing. Others. Other things, Emily, I, I don't know if you You all know, but Emily's video, if I am, can somebody else take over? Lori, were you talking to me? I didn't hear what the question was because you broke up. Yeah, can you guys hear me now? I'm so, so sorry. Okay, can okay, you can hear, you me? hear me? Uh, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna try to go from here. You're all still there, can you hear me on my phone? Yes, yes I apologize. apologize. Gosh, Gosh, this is, is not, not good, good. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, um, Emily, Emily, I was just, just mentioning your videos online where you're showing and teaching about your farm and you've got some that are cooking and sharing with other moms. These are opportunities that we have to be an influence in our, to, to be, to share something positive within our sphere of influence. So I'm just making, throwing that suggestion out there that we start paying attention to looking for ways that we can fulfill whatever it is that is our work. Does that make sense at all? Yes, a little bit of head nodding. And I'm 
I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep the screen up here so that I can see you all. Please feel free to jump in anytime since I keep having internet issues. Lori, something that stood out to me along um, these lines is that in our reading, I forget the title of the last article, but it talked about um, God leading her. And um, I just, I thought a lot about um, how his ways are quiet and they're small steps. Usually it's not a big, huge thing. They don't, that he gives us to do it. Small things, one step at a time, he leads us in a direction and towards something. And we may not understand what that is, but as we move in the direction and do what he's guiding us to do, um, more opportunities are opened up and we start to see the bigger, the bigger things happen. And um, anyway, I just think that that stood out to me, those gentle ways. Yes, yes, through small and simple things. That phrase keeps coming up over and over again. It won't be anything that is too big for you to handle, too much for you to do within your own days. But it, but I do think that there is something coming, you know, something that we're going to be asked to do together, collectively, individually, you know, probably a little bit of both. More thoughts? I have a thought. Um, yes. So in my coaching business, I get coached on my business quite often. And one of the things that they frequently say is the how doesn't matter. It's more about your mindset and do you believe and when I was listening to this um chapter I guess I just especially what Linnell just shared I just my mind was just blown at what an honor it is to be a mother especially today in today's world what an honor it is to be a mother and to be a homeschooling mother especially to have so much um power in the future, in our children and raising children. And my mind went to, um, when, I was in, when I was in the MTC, I remember sitting in that big auditorium with all those missionaries, thousands and thousands of missionaries, hearing them all being called to serve. And the power that was in that room was just so thick and you could feel it, the spirit was so strong. And I remember thinking, you know, we are ambassadors for God. And an ambassador is a representative of God that they each go to their own different country to represent the Savior. And I think we, that's what came to my mind again um, today when I was listening to this, I listened to it this morning, um, was that we are ambassadors for God. We are all in our own individual, not necessarily country, but our own, you know, I don't know, sphere, um, in our own place, our own families. And we are ambassadors. We, the how does it matter? And when we truly realize the power that we have as mothers and, and that amazing responsibility and the partnership that we have with the Lord, we will naturally know the things that we need to do. We don't need to worry about the how. We just need to really feel what an honor and treasure, you know, that this um, amazing calling is to be a mother. I love that, Laura. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad that you had those kinds of feelings as you were reading that part of this chapter, because it is really powerful as she talks about that. You know, on the one hand, we're being called the remnant, you know, it's kind of like the leftovers, you know, but that leftover group, that small group is that group that will come back and help rebuild the world, rebuild this country, rebuild, you know, and prepare um, this world to, to um, welcome the Savior. I really feel like that's our calling. We are being called to prepare this generation of children to prepare the world. So I don't know how many generations out that is. I don't know what that means, but they need to have this foundation so that they can do whatever it is that they're called to do, whether it is just teaching their children, you know, and they teach their children, or it is they are going to do the, the welcoming. I don't know. You know, we don't know the timing, but I do believe that that's what's starting. I do believe that these things that the prophets have been talking about, about, you know, the women have an important work to do, and we need to be scripture scholars, and we need to learn how to hear him, and we these things of preparation that are all things that will just bless our lives in our day to day. That's all we're being asked to do. It's not like it's really anything 
huge. Like you said, they're kind of small and simple things, but great things are going to be brought to pass because of mothers being mothers, catching this vision of what it means to teach our children through using the arts, helping to reach their hearts because that is where true learning takes place. I mean, all of these things just fall together for me as I continue to listen to her podcast or watch a video or listen to a take five or read from these books. In everything, there are these, these repetitions of basic, simple principles. It's beautiful and it is a pattern of learning and it is God's pattern of learning. and. One of the things I'm amazed with about Marlene, and it's the same thing I'm amazed about Heavenly Father, is the patience. <laughs> the patience, putting it out there and then being patient that eventually we, um, the slow um, children, <laughs> you know, slowly progressing little by little, are eventually going to get it. You know, Rachel, go ahead. Okay, sorry, just along those lines, I'm going crazy because I was looking for where it said it and now I can't find it. Um, but we're, you know, we're in a society that's so focused on ourselves. And um, then, she, you know, she thought about planting a tree and. Oh, oh yeah. Was and not being around to be in the yeah, shade of that tree. <clears throat> but wouldn't, which would you still plant it anyway? And, you know, I have felt. I felt a lot of that anxiety in the beginning of just like, my kids are so much older. This isn't, you know, so many people are starting and their kids are just these little and they, they'll grow up with this. And I just felt like, is what I'm doing going to make a difference? Is, is introducing this so late in the game going to matter? And, <coughs> um, and then I really got thinking in a lot of ways, we've done a lot of these things always. It just wasn't labeled something. Right. But in other ways, I'm like, but if this is what I can introduce, I may not see the fruits of everything in my lifetime, but I would still plant the tree, knowing that somebody else will someday, you know, that if you can make that difference now, if you can plant those seeds now, they will grow to, to fruition. They will be beautiful and enjoyed by so many people. So yes. I just, yeah. I love that you brought that up, Rachel, because that's the thing I wanted, I hoped someone would bring up because she also talked about how her notebooks, her nature notebook, her My America story notebook, these places where she has been recording the things she's learning, these, in, these really important principles, these wonderful people, examples of their great lives, She's recording all of this so that in the years to come, her children, her grandchildren, her great grandchildren could pick up her books and learn about these things, learn about these things that she felt were important. And that was part of one of those trees that she would plant that could bless the lives of those who come after her. And I think that's wonderful to think about our lives and things that we could do to, um, can you fix that? things that we might be able to do that would be ways of planting trees, you know. Can I add to that? Yes, please. Um, I would suggest that we are the tree. So this week, um, I watched a funeral of a friend's um, husband who died. And they planted a tree and the, the tree was symbolic of him. And in a lot of the talks in his funeral, they, they compared him to a tree and said that he was rooted in the ground. Like it, they talked about his being, I don't know how to describe it. They said it so well of him being rooted so strong in his beliefs and, and that he had branches that just kind of protected that you felt safe with him. And just, they really just, I love the way that they described um, him as the tree and then they planted a tree in some symbolic of him um, and then it's interesting because they planted it in his children's favorite part so they could play and have dad there in a way but anyways it, it reminded me also of a quote I'm not sure where I heard this this week or it's just kind of been lingering in my mind um, that of 
a child's best curriculum is their mother. And I think that goes right along perfect with um, us being that tree. But we're not just planting seeds, but we are what we are, you know, plant that, those seeds in our own hearts, and we are the tree. That's lovely. That's such a lovely thought. Any other comments? I have an echo now, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, I did want to mention that Ida has shared some really wonderful things this week that were parenting helps. So if any of you have been feeling the need for help in that area, oh gosh, there were just beautiful things that I really could have. I'm trying to do. Oh, oh, oh I see. Sorry. Hello. Is that better? No more echo? You think I would learn. Okay. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Um, but anyway, Ida, the things that she shared, Ida, what's the name of that resource? If you have a chance and can tell us that at some point or somebody can, that would be helpful. Yeah, later. Um, it was really wonderful. Great, great resource for parenting. I thought, oh, those are principles that make so much sense. And, um, and I really could have used those. Okay, and I lost the earlier chats too, sorry. I'm just banging on all cylinders. <laughs> other comments and, and completely unrelated. We can go now to other topics. We have addressed the things that we did. Did Lori freeze? We very successfully had our Darn it. Did I freeze? You're back now. Um, am I back both places? Am I back? I'm so yes. sorry. Linnell, go ahead. All right, I'll share. It's been along these lines, but she says, you know, children, no, no, no. She's talking about her business plan and about how she has this collection of books and people, like no one's showing interest. And so she, people are, I don't know if she, it's her that was saying, but here it says, you know, children aren't reading very much anymore, especially old books without any pictures. There really isn't a market for what you were doing. And I was one of those moms who didn't have my children read and who didn't have old books and who would not have been interested. So I'm like, yeah, I, I understand that, that idea that why are you collecting old books? But then she goes on, and this is what really impressed me. It was her resolve and her understanding of her purpose. And she just moved forward. So she says, and I was asked how I planned on marketing this, what my business plan was, how I was going to get the funds to publish the books. The truth was I had no business or marketing plans. I didn't exactly know why I was doing what I was doing. I was just doing what I felt I had been asked to do. And I'm so amazed at how she just did something, even though they were really like confusing concepts, how in the world and who is gonna do this? And there's so much going against her. So she goes on to say, in my heart, I was told the Lord was preparing a network of mothers. And when the time was right, he was going to start writing messages on my heart that when I delivered them, it would resonate in their hearts. And these mothers would be drawn to the message and would want to learn more. I was one of those mothers that was drawn to this message and I wanted to learn more. And now my life is completely different. And she even says, I believe you are the fulfillment of that promise. So that is, that just gives me warm fuzzies. I'm, I just feel neat to be part of this really big work. And I look to Marlene as a role model of someone who knows what her purpose is and moves forward and then on the next um a few pages down on page nine she says sometimes you may feel all alone you may feel obscure inarticulate rubbing along as best as you can and i have felt that but the lord knows you and you are counted and valued by him he takes the weak things of the world and makes them strong he is an artist and you are his masterpiece 
in progress. And how do you want, and how do you know if you are of the remnant? If you love the Lord and seek to do his will, you are of the remnant. And so I can definitely say that I love the Lord and I want to do his will. And so I take hope in this promise that he will help me and guide me just as he did Marlene. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's such an encouraging, positive message that's here. And as you watch the sex, see and become aware of some of the sacrifices that Marlene has made to bring all of this to the world with all of the discouragement that she faced, all of the, like it says, even apathy, you know, over the years while she was spending hours and hours collecting all of these works, the art and the music and the stories and putting all this together and not having a clue what it was for. Um, but she just kept at it. So don't give up. Don't give up. Keep moving on whatever it is that you feel inspired to do. Just the little the little things, the daily direction, as you ask in the morning, you ask Heavenly Father, what, it, what is it that you would have me do today? What is it? How can I be an instrument in thy hands? Or what work do I need to do today? Um, just take that and have faith that you can do that. If he asks you to do it, he knows that you can and do those things. Just one thing at a time. Don't get over excited and try to see the whole picture because it's probably not going to be opened up to you as a whole picture. Generally, as he works with us, it's one step at a time. So just have confidence that that one step and then the next step and then the next step is going to lead you to your purpose. Or that it is your purpose. Sometimes I think we we can't see when we're in it. We can't see that these little steps that we're taking that seem kind of insignificant are actually really great, and it's making a difference, and it's doing something. It is creating that masterpiece, and I I love that. <laughs> Linnell, I was thinking the same thing as I saw Kristen and I saw my cute little nieces and my nephew. I was thinking, I'm so glad to see you guys. Hi, Christopher. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Kristen, you have a message that says, Kristen Gavitis, I'm so happy to see you today. I've missed you and your thoughts from Linnell, including a happy face. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be back. We've had stuff pretty much every Friday for like two months. So it's fun to be back with all of you. <laughs> She's so sweet. I got to see her on Sunday. I got to see all of my sisters-in-law on Sunday too, and then the other two. So that was super fun. Okay. Isn't this just beautiful? Isn't it incredible that we have all of this here for us? And don't you want to share this with other moms? I know you're kind of afraid. I don't know if any of you got a chance to listen to Haley talking with um, Marley Billings on the Mothers of Influence page. But Marley interviewed a mom who had just recently started a Mothers of Influence group just by talking to a friend, suggesting that maybe they get together and then, um, then it grew from there. And a few other, you know, people joined or somebody said, can I bring another friend? And they got together, had a successful meeting, had a, another successful meeting. And she's, when Marley said, what have you learned for the, from this? Or what would you tell other moms? She said, I wish I would have started sooner. Something about, you know, I wish I hadn't worried so much, or I wish I'd been braver. Or I wish I'd started sooner, but that general message. And I think that's, that's how I feel too, you know, just, Go ahead and have the conversation. It can't hurt. Lindsay Watkins, you have a friend that may be joining us next week. That's exciting. Good for you. Thank you. Usually when the moms come and join us, they are, they're just such a natural part of this group. And then they're so grateful and so happy to have the support. Can you imagine if you going back, thinking back to when you did not have this kind of support? and then how different it feels to have this group of women that you know are there for you. I told you my whole trip, I kept wanting to share things with you, my friends. And that felt really good to have this wonderful group of women who I can call my friends. So more thoughts. 
And I can, you can let me know kind of where you are. Do you want to wrap up? Because we're, it's a summer Friday. Do you want to wrap up early? Do you want to keep going? I'm here. I can keep going. It's up to you what works for you moms. And obviously anybody can jump out when they want to. Yeah. Lori, it feels like we've talked a lot about how we've been led and the little steps we're taking. Yeah. And I just thought it might be neat if anyone feels like sharing any of those stories. How they've been led, you mean? Yeah, with their own personal, um, like, heart learning or their children or how they were led to well-educated heart because I feel like that's kind of what we read from Marlene and heard was how how to lead our children how to lead ourselves and how she was led to find this and to make it available to us sure sure that's a wonderful idea and I do want to check real quickly with Lindsay Watkins Lindsay what were you going to share she's like no 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 I'm not going to come on sneezing and I hit the wrong button. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Also, can we all again give Lindsay a big gigantic nod to her incredible garden? Oh my goodness. I love seeing that. You should, we would probably be happy to see that every single day, see what's going on in that garden. That I will try. The corn is all up right now. So we're so excited. That is wonderful. Thank you, Linnell, for sharing that picture. I couldn't figure out, I was like, I should have shown them how to do that, but I'm glad you shared it because it was, it was all laid out completely flat and we were so sad. And then, yeah, corn is just magical. <laughs> am I frozen? Am I good? Can you guys hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Okay, so moms, if you want to share, some of your stories about how you've been led to this or led while directing your children or any anything any positive story you feel like or or challenging story that you want to share everybody's waiting for everybody else One. I can share really quick about um, my friend being led to me, um, or my cousin actually. She's my cousin, and she's she was having a hard time with her four little kids and being alone and uh, you know just working with them. And she was having some people question her about her homeschooling. And anyway. Uh, she was just feeling really discouraged and she just felt like she should reach out to me. And so we were Marco Poloing and I was able to talk to her and just give her encouragement. Like basically all the stuff that I've gotten from this group, that feeling and just, um, I was able to kind of pass on that to her in the, in this time of struggling and being by herself and not having a sport group. Thank you. Um, and it just made me so grateful that we have these resources because otherwise, I mean, she's out in rural Idaho. I wouldn't have even been able to talk to her. So I just think that the Lord is blessing us with technology and all these resources to connect people who normally wouldn't be connected. And it's so amazing. I don't, that's what I wanted to share. Okay. I can share. Else? I'm trying to collect all my thoughts. There's so many of them, and I want to make sure I share everything. Um, this is a really just a personal question, I guess, for myself because my journey has been um, really emotional. Um, my first year of homeschooling, I threatened every single day to put my kids back in school. Um, I fell into depression. I was pregnant. And just it was really really hard and everybody around me told me put your kids back in school what are you doing like i had no support my family thought i was crazy they thought like putting your kids back in school would solve all your problems and it's interesting i actually didn't realize this until literally right now as i was pondering this question 
I have a cousin, a distant cousin. Um, he lives in Finland. And when my third child was a baby, I was really into family history. And I was searching tirelessly into the middle of the night for my great grandmother's, you know, my grandmother's parents. I was hitting walls every time. I felt the inspiration coming to bed. All the way to stop. A couple years later, I got a Facebook message from um, this girl, a cousin of mine that I didn't know at the time. This is the first time we had met via Facebook. She had found me. I don't even know how she found me, but she had searched my name somehow. Um, found me through, I don't, I really don't know how she found me, but she, she saw me on Facebook, messaged me and said, are you Gary Kirkham's daughter? And I said, yes. And she explained who she was. And anyways, long story short, she is, um, a cousin of that family that I had been searching for and had all these records. Um, I know this, what does this have to do with homespun, right? It's funny. Um, she had just hundreds and hundreds of names. I found everything that I've been looking for in years previous of records and was able to do temple work for all of them. It was just a really neat experience. But also during this time, and I didn't think this connection until right now, um, she was a really huge influence in my decision to homeschool and also my style and um, this whole heart learning, what I, what I wanted my homeschool to look like. Um, and that is because Finland is like the number one country they lead globally in education and when you start to study how Finland um, does their education it is so much heart running they obviously it's a public school but their public school system is so different than our public school system can you guys try to turn that down sorry if you can't hear me um they don't start kindergarten until like age eight and and um, even then it's half day they don't do homework like they just don't believe in homework like it is they nurture the love of learning and those first eight years of life is all focused on social and emotional development and so my first year of homeschooling um coincidentally i also found coaching and coaching and learning to control my my mind and my emotional my emotional health and all of that like is what for me transformed my schooling and helped nourish my heart and learn um, how important emotional development is in being prepared, being prepared to be taught um, academically. And so it makes so much sense now. And I literally like, just made this connection that like the way Finland does education is so much uh, heart learning. And it's interesting that this cousin of mine that I was able to connect with her at this moment that I like my kids were starting to go to school and it was just that time of life. And honestly, I haven't talked to her in like two years. Um, it's interesting that it was just that time period that I really needed that inspiration to be guided to this type of learning for my kids. And anyways, I'm, it's interesting and I'm really grateful for this question because I had not even thought of that until right now, but study Finland's education if you're curious, it's really interesting. I was just going to say, that's really cool. I had read that about Finland. So that's super interesting that there's that connection. That's really fun. Well, Lindsay Watkins has studied it as well. Nice. And then before I just, I, I, I was going to type this to Kristen, the other Kristen separately, but Kristen, I'm just going to tell you that if you want to be on any, connected with us in any other ways, be sure to let me know that to send him a, a private message in the chat or send in the chat your like your email or other ways to contact you if you want to be connected that way. You can also join our Facebook group. You just have to friend me on Facebook. Now we can do that. Oh, sorry, just a little side thing. Okay, other thoughts. I love these, this is great. And I'm sorry, I'm in two places, but I apparently have to keep it going this way. You know, I love the idea that Marlene is the librarian. If we keep that in mind and we really do consider libraries of hope just an extension of our personal library, 
then we might remember that we have these resources. I don't know if anybody else saw this morning, but this morning on Well-Educated Heart, somebody had asked a question wanting to know what people use for a resource for um, music appreciation or music study, composer study, something like that. And um, I thought, oh, poor Marlene. Every time we ask those questions and we have per perfectly sincere, pure intentions, we just haven't quite learned yet that the resources are there. It doesn't mean that we can't use other resources, of course. But um, Marlene just kind of quietly, you know, mentioned, have you looked at this video where I talk about, you know, and um, so then I went on and I took a picture of that page and I've talked about that and I took a picture of how you could reach it from another way because I just learned through watching her videos again that if you go to where that where you um, on the enrichment pages, if you click on the music or go down to the music slash stories section that on those YouTube videos, there's a little, there's some typing underneath there. And when you look at those, you click on them and it takes you to these notes from the, now I can't remember, some city in, um, in America, uh, Young People's Concert Series or something. And you learn a little bit about the composer, about the history, something about the piece. And it's just all right there all right there, right under our noses, you know, and we forget that we have this resource. So consider Libraries of Hope, your extended library, and Marlene, your librarian, that might help us to remember that we have these incredible resources at our fingertips. I love when I hear you, those of you talking about things that you're using from the Libraries of Hope, because, um, that's, that's wonderful to know you're using these resources. It's kind of like our scriptures, you know, they're there. They've been there the whole time. We have access to them. We can read them anytime we want. We could actually study them. Um, we could gain a lot of insight from them. You know, and I wonder how many times Holy Father is thinking, you have the answers, they're right there. But we're learning and that's okay. Ida, what's the site that you have been sharing from for those parenting resources now that I can see you are home? And other people can talk while you're looking. Don't worry, no pressure. I could have looked too, but I'm sorry. I've got two screens. I'm trying to keep track of them. That's enough for me. Okay, other thoughts, other shares, other motivation, inspiration? I was trying to get my computer to um, start. No, it's fine. Hold on, it's starting. I'm gonna switch over so it'll be easier. Yeah, no worries. Mm -hmm. Those were just sweet thoughts. Did any of you, any of the others of you see any of those posts that she shared? Do you know what, what it is that I'm talking about? Just this gentle parenting, respectful parenting. And in fact, you know, a, a, one of them was a concept that I've always said, and this is stated a very different way. And I thought, oh yeah, I think I was wrong about that. And I would love to share that with my kids, you know? Okay, I think that I didn't have that quite right. Can you hear me now? Uh-huh, I can hear you. Okay. Can you guys hear Ida? There's actually a couple that I've been sharing from because I have been um, looking at all these different resources for um, trying to help kids with trauma and stuff like that for thinking about ways that I can be a better parent just in general, but also to help my girls when they come and be more yeah. aware of what they are um, thinking about. So the one is uh, called the Post Institute and they are, they specifically deal with like providing trauma-informed education and solutions for, for families. Um, and he, that they have this book that I read that was really good so that actually somebody in our Mothers of Influence Marie, yeah, I think it was Marie. She recommended the book to me and I got it and read it and it was excellent. So then I joined also their Facebook group. 
And then the other one is called ooh, Flourishing like Homes and flourishing, Families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's like a, a Christian, um, let's see. Flourishing Homes and Families is a resource for Christian gentle parenting and grace-based parenting. Some of the things that I don't agree with everything necessarily, but I feel like it's really good to have another perspective, right? Like, mm -hmm. and think about things in a different way. And I just think it gives you good ideas and thoughts about how to approach challenges with your kids. And because um, everybody has them, right? Nobody, I don't think here is free from challenges with their children at times. I pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. I can't see any of your faces right now. <laughs> um, anyways, so both of those I think are really helpful. And I've been reading, uh, where's my, can you guys still see me? Because I can't see anyone. <laughs> I can't um, see you. you can't see me? Now I can. Okay. I right. might just see me. No, I think it was my thing. Uh, I think I've, I've been reading this, the book by Gordon Neufeld, um, Hold On to Your Kids. And it's, uh, <laughs> thanks, Linnell. Um, it's been really interesting to read it. And it's made me think um, just so many different things. Like I, I'm only like halfway through the book, but I'm, I feel like there's so much I feel so blessed, first of all, that my kids are at home. I'm homeschooling them because a lot of the influences that um, he talks about being oriented. So kids, the problem with our society with a lot of children and things that are going on in our society in general, he talks about how kids are becoming peer oriented instead of adult oriented. So they form attachments with their peers and, in, and it, which is fine normally, but it becomes a problem when those peer attachments are conflicting with the adult attachments in their lives. And so because of that, when you are like attached to a peer instead of an adult and it's conflicting, you, you become polarized and more and more distant from your parents and closer and closer with your peers. It's really interesting and fascinating what I've been reading in the book. I, I loved it, but there's also things in there that I'm, I'm like, I'm so glad my kids are at home and I'm homeschooling them. And what a blessing that is because it has made a huge difference in my attachment to my children. And I feel like I, I don't feel like they're necessarily totally attached, but I feel like I have, it's extended the time that I have to do something to make sure that I'm more attached to them. And so I'm really glad that I'm reading this book right now because it's helping me see a lot of things that I can do a little bit better, you know? And anyways, it's really great. <laughs> so I, I totally, you guys should all read it. I mean, I totally recommend it. It's, it's a little um, uh, heavy on like more scientific sounding in some ways, but it's really good. Anyways, and then the other thing is I loved what Linnell was talking about a bit. Like I think about like the remnant, you know, like being the remnant. I always mm -hmm. think of like, I don't, I don't know why it makes me think of this, but like, you know, when you're cooking, and you're like cooking meat in your pan and then like there's the juice that's left over the little bits all and it bits. has like all the yummy flavor and you can like put a little bit of juice in there and like what do they call that um uh I can't deglaze. yeah deglazing the pan and then they take mm -hmm. that and they're like always get that part and like pour it on your food that you're cooking or whatever like because it has so much yummy flavor in it and i feel like that makes me it makes me think of it when we talk about the remnant like that it's like you're not like left over like you're just like oh it's just what's remaining it's like they have this concentration of goodness and flavor and beauty and like that you want that to have that for your to your food to make it even more delicious and i think um and then I love how Marlene talks about like she was led to do something and and I feel that in my bones like I have felt that in my life so many times and I feel like um, I was thinking about like when I went on my mission to the Philippines I remember seeing things in the Philippines that I had loved my whole life or that I had been drawn to 
And it was like so funny to me, like thinking like maybe Heavenly Father was just like slowly like leading me to this place. And I had no idea, you know, like just like even plants, like I love plants and I had these house plants. They're like weeds in the Philippines. I had no idea. <laughs> and and other like just funny things along the past, like a, a, a really good friend that I had in middle school and she was from the Philippines. And I had no idea like even where that was really I was like cool you're from the Philippines that's so awesome you know and and I feel like that has been the case like with the adoption and like even this uh, and absolutely with like well-educated heart like um in my patriarchal blessing it says that I should um read and study the best books and I've always felt like okay so like my scriptures you know I mean like what what does that mean besides that you know like and I've always felt like it was my scriptures, but I just didn't really think about it a lot. But as I've started to um, like soak in all these stories and this all this stuff that Mallory has, I'm like, that she's collected for us. I think, wow, I feel like Heavenly Father maybe was just leading me to this place. And and that's just one, like this, uh, somebody talked about it, the little miracles along the way that are like love notes from Heavenly Father telling you, this is where you're supposed to be keep going, keep doing what you're doing. And um, if you're paying attention, if you're trying to, you'll see those, you know, when you need, you need to know that you're in the right place, he'll send you one of those love notes. I just, like, I felt that so much. I know that's true. Like to have those little, like just glimpses of like a flash of light, kind of like, like, yes. It's like the lightning when you're walking in the dark. <laughs> okay, we're on the path. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Anyway, feels like that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. It does, and I think that that's how Heavenly Father works a lot. That's, that's that's faith, you know. Like we strengthen our faith when we have to keep going, even though it's a little scary. And people are telling mm -hmm. us you're crazy. Like with our adoption, like people are like, "Why are you adopting three teenagers?" Like anytime I say that we're adopting teenagers, people look at me like I have horns growing out of my head. Like that's a bad idea. <laughs> I'm like, maybe it is, but here we are. <laughs> It is such, it depends on which side of that you're on. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> because for those three girls and for your family, what an incredible blessing. And I agree with what Linnell said earlier. That's just so sweet that they are your girls and that that's how you talk about them, that you already, they're yours and you love them. And we feel that love. It's just what an incredible gift for those three girls. Just we, so beautiful. We feel super blessed. Hopefully. <laughs> I will always remember it's just like when you have a baby you know like really you have to you have to savor those special precious moments because there's a lot of hard moments right yeah it's not always hard but there are exhausting just heart-wrenching moments that you're going to experience and so you have to like really write those down and remember those those memories and those special times when you're like i just want to like pause time right now because I just love you so much right this minute and it's just filling my heart so full and I don't ever want to forget that you know like we have those moments as moms and it's hard to remember those when things are challenging and they're going crazy so having those written down like you can go hide in your closet with your flashlight or your phone and like read your journal and be like okay I love my kids <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> anyways sorry I'm gonna stop talking now <laughs> No, it's perfect. I for a for during a difficult difficult blah, a difficult time period, my husband posted up for me a picture of one of my children as a toddler, um, in a place where I could see it, but nobody else really was aware that it was there. So that every time I had an interaction with that child as a teenager, or young adult, I could picture that little toddler that I loved dearly. And you know, I could remember that that person, that spirit was in there. That's who I was talking to. <laughs> and it was incredibly helpful because we do lose sight of that, of who, you know, those feelings that we have. Anyway, I love it. I love it. And Kristen, yeah, Ida, that is a beautiful way to look at the remnant. I really like that. And maybe is the remnant the salt of the earth? You know, I don't know. But um, we definitely, definitely have a place. And um, it's, I think we are supposed to be about preparing for what it is that the Lord's going to call us to do. 
And again, don't be overwhelmed by that. It's a one thing at a time, one thing at a time. That's all you have to do is what he's asking you to do next. And that's not overwhelming. What else? There's so many things I was gonna share with you. I watched a video this week that came up and it was three wonderful, lovely people who are over a hundred. Somebody had interviewed them just about their lives and had them share some thoughts looking back. And it was the sweetest thing. These were such happy people. They were just happy to be alive and grateful. They enjoyed life. They had enjoyed their families. And um, I don't know what it was about it. It was just sweet to feel like I was in the presence of these very grounded people. I don't know. It was something, something about that. And I just loved it. I thought, you know, to have that perspective, to look back after a hundred years of being on this earth and interacting with people and to take advantage of their perspective is pretty incredible and pretty special. Anybody like else? Go ahead, Lynette. And share how I found this group, how I was led to this group. So I was already part of a well-educated heart, but I was not involved in a Mothers of Influence group. And I was sitting in the temple one day, and I like to just sit and ask Heavenly Father if he has any direction for me. And so one day, and, and usually I, I uh, think of a name of someone that I call, or I think of something I can improve in mothering life of a way I can serve someone this time the only thought that came to my mind was mothers of influence and that's it and I didn't know what that meant and I kind of questioned it and I was like maybe that wasn't really from heavenly father maybe that was like it was just so out of context to me I didn't know what to do with that and it wasn't like anything I had ever received before so I kind of just held on to it in the back of my mind and after we go to the temple my husband and I we have a tradition of asking each other, so what did God tell you today? And what was your conversation like? Or, or what direction do you have? And so he asked me, and I told him that my direction was Mothers of Influence, but I have no idea what that meant. So it was a very distinct impression, but I was still really hesitant and didn't know what to do about it. And then uh, at the beginning of the year, my my one New Year's resolution was to get outside every day. And this was a big jump for me, like a big difference, because last year I didn't get outside very much at all. And so I just wanted to make a goal of every single day stepping outside, not staying in the house for weeks on end and never leaving. So I had that in mind. And the way that I feel, well, the way that I was led here was because Lori had posted on the Well Educated Heart group that she had invited Ginny from 1000 Hours and she just opened up the meeting to anyone who wanted to come. And because I had set this personal goal of getting outside and I knew that Ginny was an advocate and had her, her um, Instagram account, then that piqued my interest. And so joining a Mothers of Influence group or being with women online that I had never met and doing a Zoom meeting was very much not um, something I would do, but joining those two things together, my own goal of getting outside and that thought that Heavenly Father put in my mind in the temple, I did it anyways. And that was my first meeting. And I have been joining the meetings ever since. And so I think about all of those things that, that were in place before I could find this group. I think about how Lori was doing her meetings from well before and I think about Ginny who was doing her account from well before and I think about me setting up my goal there are so many things that brought me here and I think it's amazing how Heavenly Father puts things in our lives and orchestrates it so perfectly the timing the people the inspiration and if we're willing to follow him and figure things out then he leads us to beautiful amazing and wonderful places Thank you so much for sharing. That is really pretty incredible. And it's not wonderful to feel that love from Heavenly Father that he would direct you to where you needed to go. I 
I love the idea of being able to have confidence in him that he will provide us with the answers we need, the direction we need, the help that we need. I love that. Thanks, Linnell, for sharing that. Anybody else? Oh, right, Ida. You can pop on for a sec. Pop on. Oh, I was just, I love that story because that's like the same as kind of, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't go to the temple. I had just been praying and praying and I wasn't part of, um, others have been, I wasn't part of well-educated heart really, but I had the app on my phone because somebody told me about it as a resource. And then I had been following Megan Nord because she unschooled and I wanted to know more about that. And so I was like trying to listen to everything she was saying <laughs> just so I could understand it better. And then we'd been praying as a family about what we should do for our kids' education and all the kids. And I was like, I, I want you guys to pray. Let's just pray about this every time we have a family prayer and like in my own prayers. And then I found uh, the the link that Kathy Brown posted and shared about um, uh, the Mothers of Influence meeting that had Megan Norp in it. And I was like, oh, I want to watch that. So I watched the whole thing. And then I was like, can I be part of this group? Which was so like you know, totally out of my, my realm of like, that's comfortable for me to do. So anyways, I did that. And then that's how I kind of like, then Lori's like, check out Mother's, of, you know, Well-Educated Heart and do the intro course and all that. And so then here, here I am. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy. Like so many things, like you say, lining up and like Henley Father was just the master orchestrator. Like he's got everything mm -hmm. going at the same time and doing just what he like, okay, now this here and this here. And like, just by following those little teeny promptings to do something that may be just a little stretching, but not overwhelming. You're like, oh, I'll try and see what happens, you know? And then here you are. <laughs> it's yeah. Pretty amazing. yeah, I love that. It is pretty incredible. And I think Oh, good. We still have Emily because Emily was the one that asked about people sharing those stories. So I'm glad that she's still here in the background somewhere. <clears throat> but that's great. Anybody else have anything else they would like to share before we go? I just love this idea that we've been brought together because even Emily, you know, Emily was watching the videos, not part of our Friday group. And then all of a sudden, Emily was is here with us. Emily, did you want to pop on and share your story before we go? Sure. Right. I ask the question? Yeah, absolutely. I love hearing how um, people are brought together. It's pretty fascinating, all the little things that happen. Um, I better run and plug in my phone. It's going to quit. Anyway, um, my journey to an educated heart was based on me wanting to have a literature story-based um, education for my children, because that was what they remembered, was the stories that uh, we told. And I, I, I like to tell stories, I like to hear stories. So um, I was searching and I found it, and I didn't understand it, but I kind of delved a little bit into the library. And then, um, years passed my kids were back in public school um one of my daughters needed to come home to do school and again I was looking it's like this I really want to be able to do this but I didn't know where to start and I was worried about making sure she didn't miss any knowledge so she could stay um up with her peers and all of those worries we have as mothers as we're caring for our children and um and I came across her Marlene's website again. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna jump in, write, just get started, do the whole thing. And so I went through her Catch the Vision where she has the videos and the podcast and the little articles to read. And I loved it. And um, we started using more of her stories and I love her audio stories. Um, for my children who are in public school, we listen to those as well. Uh, with them when we're in the car traveling, which we do a lot of because we live 35 miles from anywhere. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's just, it's softened my heart. It's, I've noticed I have more empathy. I have um, 
more patience. I'm finding myself stopping to think a little more before I speak. I still put my foot in my mouth more than I should. But I, anyway, it's just made me a more thoughtful person. And I've noticed um, the atmosphere in our home has changed too. And I'm just so glad to find it. And it's so amazing that it is um, free for us, that, that she's made it available like that, that she's connected us with the internet archive, the library. We can check books out for a time um, digitally uh, because not everything is in our public libraries or that we can purchase um, to be sent to our home. And it's just been a blessing. And as I start gathering things to get ready for the next, um, I still have, anyway, the next part of our school education at home, it's just amazing how I've been led and guided as to what should be done. And as I talk it over with my daughter, well, what do you think about this? I found this and she's getting more excited and part of it is her age too, but more involved in in what she's going to learn and how she's gonna learn. And it's just blessed our lives. I love that. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, I know I say this all the time, but I just love it. I think it's amazing that he brought us all together and that's pretty cool. And we're across the country, all in our own different places with our own different circles of friends and people around us. So. Um, that's pretty exciting. I wanted to share one other thing with you that I heard when I was listening to Marlene, and it was just interesting. She was talking about a person who was looking for books, um, and they were going to the public library, and they were trying to find some books for their children to use in educating their children, but they wanted to make sure that that in in none of the books that they found that they would run in that their children might run into God. They did not want that to happen. No language about God or deity or anything like that. And the person that they were talking to told them that if they used the book list prepared by the Library Association of Association of America or whatever, whatever some whatever the library association is that if they use books from that book list, they could be assured that that would never happen. And I thought, oh, wow. That's why when I go looking for these treasures in my library, I can't find them. They're not there. So that's really interesting. So no wonder Heavenly Father would prepare a library for us virtual library and one that we can have in our homes if we choose where we can find him and isn't that such a blessing that there was a woman who had enough faith who was humble enough to continue forward through all the discouraging moments and i don't know if you've read and listened further along into her story Marlene and her husband lived in a home in Alpine, Utah. There was this beautiful home. They moved there from Colorado. It took six moving trucks to bring all of their things with all of their kids and everything to this home in Alpine, Utah. And then they had some health issues and that, that brought along some financial issues. And they got to the point where finally they ended up leaving their home in Utah selling most of their things, taking a trailer and moving back to live in the unfinished basement of their daughter's home in North or South Carolina, I don't remember which. And as they were in this very tough situation to be in when you're older, I can attest to that. Um, and they were praying and saying, Heavenly Father, you know, what is it that you want us to do? And he said, well, now that something like, well, now that all of the stuff's out of the way, we can really get to work. And they had already been gathering these materials and starting to collect and put these stories online and everything, but this gave them the freedom and the um, lack of distractions to work solely on this project. So it's really interesting, the sacrifices that they've made, the things that they've gone through to bring this Libraries of Hope to the mothers who have been gathered, um, that just like she was told that she would prepare all this and the mothers would come 
and so we are part of that and i am grateful to be part of this remnant of mothers i feel so very blessed to be called to this work that i don't i don't know exactly what it is but i know that i'm supposed to move forward every day just trying to find out what it is he wants me to do today so i hope you will all find happiness and satisfaction and a sense of peace as you start looking for that direction or continue to look for that direction in your lives and follow that as we as we move forward being this i don't know some sort of an army really on this earth as we're preparing for the second coming of our savior i think it's such a privilege to be part of this I would love to turn this over now to Linnell, if you don't mind, to provide a summary and a wrap up of what we've done today. Thanks, Linnell. My sister-in-law gave me this. The mom life is the best life. I usually don't keep cards, but I thought this one was a pretty great reminder and I keep it on my desk to remind me that being a mom is a holy calling that it's a gift and it's an opportunity and this past week I've had the opportunity and the blessing and the challenge of dog sitting and I am not a dog person I don't know anything about dogs and I don't feel comfortable with dogs and I don't know how to take care of them and it's been hard but I love my friends and so I'm doing them a favor, not because I'm capable, not because I have any idea what I'm doing, but because I want to be of help and of service to my friends. And I think about being a mom and how when I had my first baby, I had no idea what I was doing, but I love the Lord. And sorry. I love God and I want to help him. And I know that each of you love God and want to help him too. Sometimes we don't know what we're doing. Sometimes it's really hard, but education is between a child and God. And so he wants to help us and he will help us. And being a mother, I think is the best education we can have because we get to be tutored by a loving heavenly father. And in the beautiful way that God orchestrates things in our lives, my family reading, my family Book of Mormon reading happened to be in Mosiah chapter two on a really hard day with this dog where he was peeing and pooping in my house and I don't know how to do anything with him and with her. And it was a hard day. And so I read the scripture in, in 17 and it brought me to tears because Heavenly Father assures us that when we serve others, when we are in the service of our fellow beings, we are only in the service of our God. And so I was reminded that he saw my challenges, he saw my efforts, and he saw my, my love for this friend and for this dog who was, who was making my life difficult, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. And I'm grateful that I can be an instrument in God's hands to be a mother, to be a friend, to be a student and to learn and to share and to enjoy this beautiful experience that he's given us. And so each of us have opportunities to serve and to learn from our challenges and our experiences and to bless others. And it's all to show our love to our heavenly father and he wants to show us love too. And he finds moments in our day through our children, through our friends, through nature, through stories and poetry and art and music, so many different ways that he shows his love for us. And so I'm grateful for each of you and for the time to be with you and for the opportunity to learn from you. And I think that is another gift from Heavenly Father as well. Thank you so much, Linnell. Thank you all for being here. Um, thanks for this wonderful discussion. As Linnell shared with us, what a beautiful opportunity we have to be mothers. What an incredible blessing. What a holy calling. I look forward to being able to talk with you during the week 
and also to be gathered with you again next Friday. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting each other too. I love seeing that. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Bye, my friends.